Well, I'm back, and though it's been a while, I haven't been idle. But first, a quick follow-up from the previous episode. So, I mistakenly tried to get a truffle to move in to an underground mushroom biome, but they only move into houses on the surface, so... We have one up here. I would still like to get him to move in down here though. And to do that we have to basically make all of our houses inaccessible. So down here I have a uh, temporary house set up where I first purchased the um, cavern pylon because that was going to the underground jungle I had to have it have people move into another area in the caverns so I'm going to move the die trader into here which should mean that over at this pylon there is now a spare house I'll leave the princess living here because the princess has a powerful attack and the dungeon is nearby which is helpful but now that there is a house available down here we need to make this house unavailable so I should be able to reach the house that he's on if I can just Get over to where he is. Here we go, back at the house. So I managed to collect some stink bugs, which I crafted into some stink bug blockers. So by putting that in here, it should mean that this housing is now un unavailable. And now the truffle cannot move back into here. So come night time, He'll find somewhere else to move in and hopefully that will be the only available space down near the mushroom pylon. So we'll see how that goes and maybe I might need to do that one or two more times before it is the only available house for him. But I think all the other houses are currently occupied. So while waiting for that to happen, uh, in the intervening time between episodes, I did a bunch of fishing. I did a lot of fishing. I collected a lot of uh, collectibles from crates. Uh, I did a lot of fishing. And I managed to get myself another set of Terra Spark boots, which is good. Actually, two more sets of Terrace Bark Boots. I almost didn't uh, get these, but I managed to get some luck near the very end. And also a bundle of horseshoe balloons uh, for my second loadout. And basically, I just managed to get together three uh, decent loadouts. So I've got one which is optimized for yo-yos with the yo-yo bag and... Uh, mostly damaging accessories. Uh, I've got one loadout which is a little bit more designed to avoid damage. So I've got dodging accessories, a bit of healing, and a third loadout which is less combat orientated. So fishing equipment and a bit of building equipment, that sort of stuff. And while doing the fishing, I also managed to complete some quests and get a weather radio, which means that I can finally come down here and craft the fish finder. And from there, the PDA, which also I can combine with my magic mirror for a cell phone. And because I also have a demon conch and a magic conch from the fishing, I can craft the shell phone which is a nice big upgrade 
and I can cycle through where I want to teleport to, which will be nice and useful. So I think currently my home and spawn are the same location because I haven't been sitting my spawn at a bed. I've just been spawning to here and then using a pylon to get around. But now that we have the shell phone, I can probably set up a spawn somewhere else and teleport it, teleport to it easily. I also, uh, just in while building, setting up and fiddling around with the house down here near the mushroom biome, occasionally I'd pop into the dungeon and since this area here spawns bone leaves, without even trying to farm for it, I managed to get myself the full set of gear needed for a uh, Master Ninja gear. So I think I should craft that and after giving it a quick reforge, probably replace the Brain of Confusion. Uh, missing out on the Confusion will be a bit of a shame, but it gives the same dodge ability and also the dash. And the other major development is that I did fight a naturally spawning solar eclipse and managed to get myself a deadly sphere staff and an Eye of Cthulhu, both of which I have already reforged. So now that you've been brought up to date with what I've been doing uh, in between episodes, I intend this episode to fight Tier 2 of the Old Man's Army, which does have to be done before Gollum, so that we can get uh, more Defender Medals in order to purchase the Tier 3 summons. And also, I'll be looking to expand out this arena uh, towards the west. And that is going to mean removing some of these trees. And a little bit of other terrain as well, like these hills. But first, if I come down here, it's corruption. Uh, there's other corruption around near all of the NPC homes, so... Got corruption all through the ice here, and there's corruption off just to the east of the jungle. There's also corruption off to the west of the jungle, and it's all getting rather too close for comfort. So I'm thinking let's try out some of this biome site potion and try and track down all of this corruption. So Previously, I've just been coming through and clearing out any that I see every now and again. But having the biome site potion should be a mean that I can not leave any stray bits behind and do the job properly. So, things like this, I would have just left them behind before because I have no idea that they were still there. So I think that's this area mostly done. We've got some hello down here, but I'm not too worried about that for the moment. Uh, not until it gets close enough to interfere with my pylon on the surface. Just scanning this on the way back up to make sure that I didn't miss any. What do we have down here? That's just a torch. I didn't clear it all out down there, just around the edges but I will do a more thorough job with uh, down here better clear some out just to uh, ensure that I'm not building my arena which will extend all the way out to here in a corruption Ooh, it almost got away from me there at the very edge. And there's a little bit further as well. Whoops. Helps to pay attention to what I'm being attacked by. But yes, I'd like to clear out most of the corruption around here and through the ice biome. Uh, also up here, along the surface. 
and a little bit in the area around here near the new mushroom biome and up along here around the edges of the jungle as well although it's no longer so urgent because the jungle retain the jungle grass stays mud now when it gets corrupted but it's still creeping along and it's getting very close to this set of houses now as well so that's a lot of work uh, most of it will probably be done off camera but I'll head to the ice and take another biome potion oh I forgot to reset my buffs that's okay I'm sure I'll be okay so you can see that the corruption is very close to the houses here and I've had to purify the area a fair bit previously now I will be coming back to this area and also to the desert as well in order to turn it into crimson and into hollow uh, later in to fill out the bestiary. So I have already cleared out all the entries in the uh, corrupt ice, uh, wherever it ends up being. Corrupt ice, it's just the pig run, which I've already collected. Uh, but I will need the crimson ice which is here, and the hello dice, uh, yep, which would be this one here. And I'll also be looking for the underground crop desert and the underground crimson desert as well. But that can happen at a later date when I'm on to the more completionisty tasks like completing the beastery. This is an area that I've already been doing a fair bit of contaminating on, uh, especially before 1.4.4, because it's so close to the jungle. So you can see here, this is an area that got corrupted before 1.4.4, and so much of this has been contaminated many times already. But there's always just these odd spots that get left behind. I need to pay more attention to my health. As I was saying, there's always these little odd spots, single blocks that get left behind and you don't see them because they're buried so far into the wall. And it just makes it really hard to completely eliminate all of the corruption from an area so all the way out here and all the way out to the beach as well it spreads that fast that I've cleared the beach several times oh quick distraction we have a solar eclipse So I think that's my cue to go home and see if we can get ourselves a broken hero sword. But this is part of the reason why I think it's time to expand out the arena. It's just a little bit insufficient for the needs of the events that we're currently fighting and especially for the next tier of events like the Martian Madness or the uh, lo lunar events um, so the pumpkin moon and the frost moon as well as uh, other fights that we may end up doing out here as well 
of which none are immediately com coming to mind, but I'm sure there's one I'm forgetting. So here we see now that we've got a moth run. I need to move around uh, too much to be able to spend it all in this small arena. Um, and Mothron isn't even that hard of a mini boss. Uh, so I like to spend more time on my roof than actually in the arena, which of course just invites all of the enemies to run inside my house and kill all my NPCs. But that's my front down, and it was just an eye of Cthulhu. It was a godly one, though. Here we go. Another Mothron. How long have I got on the heel? Seven seconds. But I'm not desperately in need of... Ooh, now I am. Okay, let's see what we've got. Clear out everything that we already have. Uh, there's plenty here. Shut the doors on all the intruding enemies. Let's see, we've got another Eye of Cthulhu, yep, so that's the Three Eyes of Cthulhu. And we also got Mothron Wings, which are probably better than the Bat Wings that I have. So let's put in some of these uh, items that we don't need, which is Chainsaw. That's an axe, isn't it? We do have the pickaxe axe though. Don't know about that. Uh, we don't need another death sickle. Nor a jewel hook. Now uh, we'll leave them off run wings out. I think some of this was from before the uh, solar eclipse as well. From exploring around the world. before we were interrupted. So we also don't really need the nail gun. That's a vanity. Uh, the toxic flask I've already seen. The key brand, that's from the dungeon. Uh, butcher's mask, oops, that chest is already full. Eventually I'll sell all of this. So let's have a look at these Mothron wings and see how good they are. Let's see. Uh, come out to this side. And if I fly straight up, it almost heads off the screen. Whereas if I instead equip the Mothron, Mothron wings, they look very different, and yes, that does go off the screen, so... Do I want them here, or do I want them on the evasion set? But now, with that taken care of, and my NPCs slowly moving back in, let's fight off the Eternia army. So, I have done some slight alterations to this setup uh, of repurpose these grates to now function uh, with some lava just because there's no point keeping them as actuated blocks if that cheese no longer works on the old one's army but lava doesn't damage the old one's army as well so I won't be using them here today for this purpose but for another event such as the pumpkin moon or frost moon it could prove to be useful so just checking there's no prismatic lace wings around and I'll summon in the army. Oh, I should have actually summoned in a couple of these before uh, while they were still using regular mana instead of Ethereum mana. 
that's okay. I do have some simple potions in my inventory, but we'll see if we can get by without them for now. Oh, the wave is complete. Let's start the next wave. It's pretty simple at the moment. So I'll just... Keep them going, and I should be able to summon a couple more of these now as well. So take out the javelin throwers before they cause too much trouble. And that's another wave complete. We'll keep starting the next one. Another way these previously spawned enemies also count towards it. So flying enemies are my concern at the moment. I'll let my summons deal with everything else until they cause any problems. And worry about the flying enemies. Ooh. Oops. Talk about causing some problems. And now we're going to get some problems. So this is where I really have to hope that my sentries are enough to get the job done. For the ground based enemies. Though they're clearly not. Oop. Although, we are clearing the waves pretty quick, which is helpful. Okay then, now we've got a boss somewhere. Here we go, the ogre over here. So I'll focus the yoga. And we're doing good damage to the yoga. Oh, but now there's another one. And we just have to hope that we can quickly kill the yoga and kill the third yoga before they manage to kill the crystal. There we go, wave complete. Whoops! So what do we get from that? We got the forceful tome of infinite wisdom. That's a mage weapon. Quite fast. We also got the murderous phantom phoenix. Shoots out two arrows at the time with my shooting wooden arrows. And the unpleasant sleepy octopod. So the weapons dropped here are unsurprisingly very effective against large hordes. Uh, this is the ghastly glaive which um, in just a couple of seconds so once there's a few enemies here it summons um, in little uh, sort of like fiery ghosts that come and attack nearby enemies So very good when you have a lot of enemies, particularly when they're all lined up. Almost like it was defined, uh, designed for this event. 
So yes, that's tier two of the old one's army. And I fought it a couple of extra times. So now I've got just under 100 defender medals. Should be enough to buy a sentry for the tier three or possibly even two. And I think I did get all of the possible drops. So I've got the glaive. Uh, a couple of glaives and I did get the monk's belt and the huntress's buckler of course uh, summon damage okay so there's no functional difference between the huntress's buckler and the monk's belt I guess it's just which set they pair well with. And what else did I collect? Uh, there was, of course, the Sleepy Octopod, the Phantom Phoenix, there was the Mage Weapon, which I don't see here. But I know that I collected. So it might be in, yep, here it is, so a few terms of infinite wisdom, which just don't work well with my setup. They're mage weapons, and I have a melee setup, and also the brand of the Inferno, which is a pretty neat sword, um, probably replace my true Excalibur for now. doesn't quite have the range but it does have more damage and it also has the block of a shield. Oh, I do have a shield here but it's hidden. And that should be enough for this episode so with while well, the thunder thunders away I'll clear out these trees and expand out my arena. And I shall see you in the next episode. Bye.